what what are some of the horror stories that you've have come encountered from people coming to you and say, "Hey, Leighton, I have have these wolf dogs at home, and I just can't do it anymore." Uh, I had uh, I had a couple. <laughs> I just popped in my head when you asked that. I had a couple in Texas. Uh, they ended up not letting me rescue because I wanted to. I wanted to film and I wanted to show people what yeah. was going on in this household. But the reality is right. they, they didn't want me to come in because they didn't want me to film their house because it was torn to pieces. Their carpet had been pulled Ooh. out of, you know, out their couches and chairs had been completely destroyed. Uh, their, their mattresses in their bedrooms and their kids' bedrooms completely destroyed. The sheetrock pulled out of the wall. Wow. They showed me pictures, but they weren't. A, they didn't want me to show the public that. So they're like, "No, we're going right. to go to a different rescue." And and I, you know, I explained to them in a good-hearted way that I just want to show other people what they could be potentially getting into when you have these sure. types of animals in your house. And I think the biggest mistake that people make is that, well, I've had dogs all my life. So how hard could it be? Right. Well, you're dealing with an animal right. that doesn't care about your personal desires. And what I always tell people is that anything you deem sacred in your house, they will destroy. So, yeah. you, know, <laughs> you know, live like the Flintstones and you're okay. You know, concrete floor, concrete sure. furniture. Yeah, you're okay. But, uh, and of right. course, not all wolf dogs are like that. And there's going to be people listening and go, well, my, not, my wolf dog wouldn't do that. And I've had people say, right. well, my wolf sleeps on my bed with me. Well, it's not a wolf, okay? <laughs> you you want it to be, but it's not. Yeah. Right. So, uh, right. But, you know, the, the, the majority of the real horror stories are that the animals, once the owner has determined that I can't deal with this animal, they basically put sure. it in a prison in their backyard and ignore it. And then the animal lives its life out in squalor and it does whatever it yeah. can to try to um, escape or to entertain itself. And of course, they, uh, with that kind of neglect that they get, they get sickly and then vets don't want to work with them because they're unruly and they're not trained. And you can't even get yeah. a muzzle on them, let alone capture them. And, sure. uh, you know, and you've been with me. You see what it takes to capture these animals and... How crafty have, they yeah, are! And I've been fortunate enough to be able to cap, to to film two two rescues. Uh, two, I mean, one of them were actual wolves. The other ones were wolf dogs, the ones that you and I right. you know worked on. And I have to say, I mean, th probably one of the most clever animals that you'll ever come encounter with. I mean, you could probably easy easily in five to ten minutes bring in a tiger into its cage but it'll take you probably an hour or so just to wrangle a, a wolf or a wolf dog because yeah. they're smart they are smart they don't yeah. take the bait they know what is going on they have these instincts that you're just they're like yeah you're not gonna outsmart yeah. that's outsmart me so it's it's almost like you have to <laughs> to really put your thinking yeah. caps on and, and really outsmart them because I remember the one that we did, uh, they, they kept, uh, you know, swinging side to side and they kept going right in through the, yeah. through the middle they, they watch and I'll, they I'll put observe. a clip on there. The wolf dog issue in America has exploded. There's wolf dogs for sale everywhere. Go ahead and fill in the spaces. Everybody get in line with me. You saw vulnerable girls. He's like, I'm taking them. It's all right. It's all right. You need to get behind him. Push him. Yeah. Right there. Right there. A lot of noise. Ah, he's got me. And for some reason, people think that that's a better dog to have, the ones that have it. We're realizing that that's the worst dog to have because it's the last dog that's ever going to sit, stay, roll over, play dead, or fetch your slippers, or even do anything you want it to do. They yeah. see the weak part. And they take they they take advantage of that, you know. And but and that's their instinct. That's you know when a group of wild wolves is trying to separate, uh, say, a buffalo from a herd. Sure. You know they're they're thinking about it. They're strategizing, and they know what they have to do to get the herd to go one way and get that other animal separated so they can pursue. Right. So that instinct just carries over into the wolf dog or even to the captive wolf, and uh, the. And, you know, they they read your mind. Yeah. They see you coming. Yeah. They begin to strategize immediately for the most part. Um, 
I did a really um, great rescue in uh, uh, at a zoo in Iowa mm -hmm. many many years ago, and uh, I didn't have any. I I'm thinking this is a zoo. Yeah, they're gonna have personnel and they're going to have experience and this isn't going to be a big deal well when i get there because they didn't fill me in when i get there this zoo is closing down oh they don't have any more staff they have no one to help me mm. <laughs> so so we basically recruited neighbors and uh and they had hired a gal a young girl about 22 years old uh as their interim caretaker yeah and uh, her dad was there because, you know, he knew that this strange dude was coming, right? <laughs> and, you know, I like any dad, like I would be, I want to be there, sure. take care of my daughter. And uh, and I said, hey, John, you want to catch a wolf today? He's like, you mean go in there with those animals? I said, yes. He goes, no, no, thank you. I said, look, I know exactly what these animals are going to do. Yeah. I've had enough experience and I've already observed these animals to see how frightened they are. Right. So I know exactly what they're going to do and they're going to just start running the perimeter. And all we have to do is step in with our big nets mm -hmm. and interrupt that and capture them. And he's like, no way. I'm like, I need you. He caught all three. Wow. He caught all three. And the one thing that he said, you know, these were pure wolves. Yeah. And so pure wolves behave differently sure. than wolf dogs do and um and these wolves were at a high stress level already because of the environment they were in at this right. particular zoo and uh he said you know it's amazing when i got them in the net they never growled they never snarled they never tried to bite yeah. me i'm like right that's they don't do that right for the most part sure. they don't do that because those wolves were not had never been interacting with human beings mm. now we now, when we flip over to wolves that are rather social or highly social, right. and you go to capture them, they are different. They're like, I know you humans. Yeah. I know how to get away from you people. You know? right. and, uh, and, you know, you've been at Wild Spirit enough times sure. to see that when we have the super high social ones that I can walk up to and kiss and love yeah. on and leash, it's easy for our vet to uh, come in and do what needs to get done. But then when we have the semi-social that are wary, mm. they're going to come up to you. They're going to love on you, but they're wary when a stranger comes in. That's the hard capture. Right, right. So it, it really doesn't matter as far as how they're raised. They can they all have different personalities that one can be lovey-dovey and the other one can just not be very social at all. Yep, yep. And, you know, and we had that in many cases. Uh, we tried to put animals... Like if we had an animal that was not terribly social, yeah. putting it in with a very social animal is to our advantage mm. because we, in a sanctuary, we want to be able to touch animals. We don't force it upon right. them, but we wanted to be able to touch them for their sake, right. for the ease of bringing a vet in to do vaccines or any other medical uh, procedure right. or just a, a general checkup. Right. So um, our policy was, we're not going to force socialization, but we want to encourage it. And that makes it easier for the animal in the long right. run. And, and most of these animals, for the most part, obviously, have all been rescued, have been some somewhat been socialized, in, and I guess in a certain way, if you want to call it that. Yeah. 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 Not all of them were just sequestered to a backyard. Sure. But those, those that were, were, of course, the most difficult ones, the ones that had been basically left in a prison backyard to, to survive. Right. Um, and you know, and then they're, they they're like humans, you know, they they can carry resentment towards really? humans, and uh, not really want to participate with a human because they've been so abused. Right. Well, then there's the flip side of those that have been abused and are so thankful yeah. that there are nice people, and uh, then they warm up to a, to some degree or another, and oftentimes they actually pick their person. I see. You know. I, I might be the rescuer, but they don't want right. me. They want that girl over there who's their caretaker. Right. We'll go see mm -hmm. her, you know, that kind of thing. Right. So they kind of they choose their, their person.